turning, we watch and we pray. For his returning, we watch and we pray. We will be ready the dawn of that day. We'll join in singing with all the redeems. Satan is vanquished and Jesus is King. Come, let us sing a song, a song declaring we belong to Jesus. He is all we need. Lift up a heart of praise. Sing now with voices raised to Jesus. Sing to the
we just we come before you. We just know how good you are because that's in your holiness. Your greatness is in your holiness. It's in your reverence. It's in everything that you are. And Lord, we just we give that to you. We praise your name by saying holy, holy, holy. You, God, you are the almighty. Thank you, Father, for this morning, this morning's worship, this morning's testimony. Lord, I pray that that testimony would reach the ears that need to hear it. And Lord, I pray that, that it would inspire others to share their testimony. And Lord, I pray that this worship would just continue to flow into our weeks. And Lord, that you would speak to us. Lord, I pray right now that you would encourage us and strengthen us, that you would open our ears to hear our minds to understand and our hearts to beat for you. Lord, I pray that you would open my mouth and speak through me, that I wouldn't get in the way of what you want to say. And Lord, that you would strengthen us this morning and we would remember going into this message that you are holy no matter what. Thank you, Jesus, for what you've already done and what you will continue to do this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yo. Um, my mother was in the hospital again, and she'll be 92 years old this week. Um, can we pray for your mom? Pray for my yep. mom. Yep. We're going to pray for your mom. We're going to pray for Sandra and Veda. Vita. I always get her name wrong. It's. I want to call her Vet, because <laughs> when I see it spelled out, I'm like, that's a Corvette, but it's not. It's Vita. Um Sandra, Vita, and then uh, I, Dave. We need to pray for Dave. He's in the hospital still. So let's pray for him real quick. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you so much for hearing our prayers. Thank you for, for being here. Thank you for already knowing our hearts, Lord. We lift up Sandra and Vita to you, Lord, as they're fighting COVID. Lord, we pray that you would free them from that. Lord, we pray that you would strengthen their bodies, that it would be a miracle that they're able to just get up and dance before you, Lord. Yeah. Lord, we pray that over uh, Sharon's mom, Lord, we pray that you would heal her. She's 92, Lord. Strengthen her. Give her her youthful energy back, Lord. And we, we just praise your name no matter how you heal. And so, Lord, we praise your name no matter what, Jesus. Thank you, Father, for everything. And Lord, we pray over Dave right now. Lord, we pray that you would heal his body, that you would help these infections stop, and that you would strengthen him to the point where, where he can take care of himself in this moment. Lord, thank you, Father. Give him a word of your name to share with somebody else in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. All right. Well, welcome to uh, church. I'm so sorry that I forgot to announce last week that this week we were springing forward. Amen. My bad. Um, even if I would have announced it, somebody would forget it. That's okay. In fact, probably more people would forget it if I announced it. And so I rely on my phone, so I never forget. It always just changes for me. So um, I should probably stop relying on my phone so much. Uh, last Sunday, we talked about Moses. And I didn't, I didn't look far enough in my notes, but I, I cut one message out because I'm like, you know what, I'm running behind anyway. We'll, we'll just change it. But this week, I want to talk about a season. I think a lot of times we think of the word wanderer as someone who doesn't know Jesus. Oh, they're wandering, they're lost. However, wanderer doesn't necessarily mean you're lost. Amen. Amen. And I think too often we fall on this definition that we've been told from the pulpit for so long. Well, they're a wanderer. We need to get them for Jesus. And we forget maybe sometimes we need to be the wanderer for Christ. And so this morning, I want to I dig into that season of wandering. I don't know how this seat changes, but whatever. It doesn't matter. Um, it has two legs. gets up and moves on its own. Um, but I want to say this real quick. Wandering seasons are hard seasons. They're not easy seasons. Wandering seasons are much like winter here or summer in the desert. You either feel surrounded by cold and you can't seem to find the heat, or you feel like you're surrounded by heat and you can't find the cool. Amen. 
And either way, you're either going to freeze to death, you feel like, or you're going to evaporate to death. I mean, literally, that's what happens. And so wandering seasons are not meant to be easy when you're wandering for Christ. Ouch. But we all need to seek them. Why, Why would I seek anything that's hard for my life? I'm going to tell you. Yeah, well, that's one of them, obviously. Amen. But every, every seed has its process. If you think about a seed, it has to dry out to become something that can reproduce. Amen. So we need our wandering seasons. Deuteronomy 1, as you search for that in your Bibles or if you look at the screen, I'm going to state this real quick. Wandering is a beautiful thing because it can cause us to rely on things we normally would not rely on Christ for. Wandering seasons are beautiful things because it causes us to rely on things we normally wouldn't rely on Christ for. Well, I can't seem to find it. Rely on Jesus. I can't seem to get there. Rely on Christ. I can't... I can't get anywhere I want to get. Rely on Jesus. Well, I can't pay that bill. Rely on Christ. Well, I don't know where my food's coming from. Rely on him. But so often we don't. Because a wandering season isn't meant for us. Got news for you. It is. Because it's the goodness of God that comes through the wandering. Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 6 says this. When we are at Mount Sinai, now did I get the right translation? Looks like it. When we are at Mount Sinai, the Lord said, God, sorry, the Lord our God said to us, you have stayed at this mountain long enough. It is time to break camp and move on. Go to the hill country of the Amorites and all the neighboring regions, the Jordan Valley, the hill country, the western foothills, and the Negev, and the coastal plain. Go to the land of the Canaanites and the and to Lebanon and all the way to the great Euphrates River. Look, I am giving all this land to you. Go in and occupy it, for it is the land the Lord swore to give your, to your ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and all their descendants. Amen. I want to look at what wrote, Moses wrote in the first verse there. He said, the Lord our God said to us, They're in the midst of their wilderness. They're in the midst of of being a wandering nation. And he says, the Lord, he doesn't just stop there. He says, our God, our thing we praise, our thing we worship, our person, our creator, our alpha and omega, our beginning and our end, our Lord, our God. He's giving praise in a moment that he shouldn't be because he is still stuck where he hasn't been promised to live forever. He's stuck in the wilderness and he can't get out. And he's saying, you know what? My Lord, my God, my almighty, my prince of peace, my truth, my gift, my energy, my you name it. That's who God is in the moment for him. My motivation in the moment of dryness. My motivation in the moment where I feel like I'm going to freeze to death because I have nothing else. My moment of life is in him. And he starts off writing this that way. And then what God says is, you have stayed at this mountain long enough. You've become a homebody in the place of wandering. Don't get comfortable when you're supposed to be wandering. Don't get comfortable when you're supposed to be growing. This is my first point. The wandering is a season of growth. Don't get comfortable when you're supposed to be growing. How many of us can get comfortable when we're supposed to be growing? Oh, but I'm supposed to read the word. I get so comfortable reading the word. Man, I haven't had growing pains for days. God's like, "Uh uh-uh, break camp. Stop being so comfortable because I didn't call you to comfort. Jesus, when was Jesus ever comfortable? He was so uncomfortable, he was breaking tradition. He was so uncomfortable that he called people to the... 
Peter cuts a guy's ear off, and he's so uncomfortable with him cutting the ear off, he says, Peter, what are you doing? And Peter then gets uncomfortable. Lord, I thought that's what you wanted me to do. I'm saving you. And he's like, I'm, you, no, I'm the Savior, not you. Right? Amen. And yet, Peter's growing when he becomes uncomfortable. Amen. Peter's asked to go walk on water. Y'all, you need to walk on water. No, I'm going to sink. He jumps out. He's, he's all about it. He's like, yeah, my Lord. Oh, no, there's water under me. I'm not going to flow. He sinks. And he had to rely on the Lord to reach down and grab him. He had to grow in God. He had to grow in Jesus. It's not that these people aren't God's people. It's that they are God's people. And they still had to go through the wandering moments. Oh, guess what? Moses is old. He's still having to go through the wandering moments. We can never become the people that say, well, I'm going to grow in Jesus. It's not a breakfast growth. It's not like a, a chill time to grow in Jesus. When you grow in Jesus, he puts something in you. And when something's put in you, where does it have to go? It's got to go out. You can't keep it to yourself. And that's what I'm, I'm trying to look at right here because God wants to move us to growth. He wants to move us to wandering. He wants to move us from the growth pattern we've had into a growth pattern that he wants to cultivate for us. Wandering is a season of growth. We all should seek a wandering season, not just today and not just tomorrow, not just this year, not just next year, but every single year of our life, we should seek a wandering season because God wants to grow us in unimaginable ways. Think about that. It's unimaginable. That should be the most powerful phrase in our life, unimaginable ways. Well, Lord, what do you have for me that's unimaginable today? Because when it's unimaginable and you start accomplishing it, like God does something trans, like it, it transforma- it's transformation. How many of y'all like transformation? How many of y'all like change? How many of y'all like change when someone else comes in and says, oh, we're going to change? <laughs> Not everybody. It takes special people for that. Why? Because we like our comfort. Ben, don't tell me to learn Jesus a new way. I don't want to. I've been doing this for 50 years. You don't know anything, Ben. (laughs) And when I read the word and God is speaking to the older people and he's saying, hey, guess what? You're going to break camp. And they didn't just rely on the young people. Guess what? The old people had to get up and move too. Even if the young people had to carry them, they had to do something. We cannot be people of comfort. We have to be people of growth. There isn't a season where growth is not necessary. I've never seen a season where growth stops. Even in the midst of our comfort, we can grow out. That's not good. When when we're in comfort and we sit and we don't share and we just grow out, we become what they used to call fat Christians. Do you know how long it takes to get fit again? It doesn't, it doesn't happen overnight. You know, becoming a fat Christian can happen overnight. It's not like eating food. It's like all of a sudden, boom. You fat. We laugh, but it's real. Like God is so authentically aware of our obesity and who he is that he says, hey, I need you to stop eating it all and start running it out. I need you to stop eating it all and I need you to run it out. And when you run it out, guess what God's going to do? He's going to grow your muscles, not your belly. He's going to grow your strength, your stamina, your peace, your joy, your faith, your everything. Like he's going to take this Holy Spirit fruit and he's going to be like, here's some self-control. And you're going to go, no, God, not self-control. And then he's going to say, oh, by the way, here's some patience. No, God, I just got done with self-control. You know, like that's God. 
God wants to change you. He says, hey, you're going to wander the rest of your life for a cause. Deuteronomy 8, 1 through 5 says this. It says, be careful to obey all the commands I am giving you today. Then you will live and multiply, and you will enter and occupy the land the Lord swore to give to your ancestors. Remember how the Lord your God led you through the wilderness for these 40 years, humbling you and testing you to prove your character and to find out whether or not you would obey his commands? Yes, he humbled you by letting you go hungry and then feeding you with manna, a food previously unknown to you and your ancestors. He did it to teach you that the people do not live by bread alone. Rather, we live by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. For all these 40 years, your clothes didn't wear out and your feet didn't blister or swell. Think about it. I could just stop there, right? Think about it. Just as a parent disciplines a child, the Lord your God disciplines you for your own good. Number two, humanity is cultivated in the wandering. Humility, humanity. Humility is cultivated in the wandering. How many of us need more humility? I always used to say it's a guy problem, but it's not a guy problem. It's a human problem. We all get a little proud. We all hold on to that pride. We go, "Mm mm-mm, you can't have it. But God says, you know what? I want you wandering so you don't hold on to it. I want you to constantly be tested to obey me because I don't want you to run off on your own. I don't want you to run off on your own. I want you to be with me. I want you to obey me. I want you to be humble and admit when you're wrong. I want you to come to me. Humility is created in the wandering seasons. It, it disappears when we run off on our own. You ever realize that? Like when we decide to do what we want to do, that's called pride. Yeah. It's formed right there in that instant. God, I got other plans today. Don't even test me, God. Like really, that's what we say. Have you ever said that to God? Like literally, have you ever been like, God, don't test me. Or better yet, we go, well, God, I've got plans. And we don't necessarily say it, but we do it anyway. It's like, God, you feel I'm tugging. Ever, ever happened to you? I've got other things going on today. God's like, uh-uh. Your humility has been lost. And watch out for that next season or that next minute because he's going he's gonna to take the baseball bat and go right against your face. It'll feel really good. It'll hurt so good, right? Because he wants to grab your attention. He wants you back into the growing season. He wants you back in his bosom. He wants to hold you close because he wants you to hold him close. And he's saying, hey, and the only way we're going to do this is if you're lost in my arms. Because being lost in his arm is being found in who he is. We can be wanderers of the Lord if we're lost in who he is. How many of y'all want to get lost in the word of Jesus? How many of y'all want to get lost in your prayer times with him? How many of you want to get lost in reaching others for the gospel of Christ? How many of us want to do things that we thought, no, I'm not capable, because Jesus has us capable of it? See, we need to be in those wandering seasons so when he calls on us, we're prepared. Because if we're stuck at home or if we're stuck being all comfy, then we're not prepared to go where he calls us to go. But if we're wandering... He calls us, it'll look so weird to someone else, but we'll be ready because we're on our feet. I think we, we oftentimes forget about that because we think wildernesses are bad. But really, wildernesses are what God created. And the only time it's good is if we're praying to God. Because that's what Jesus did. He went 40 days and 40 nights in the wilderness and He was praying the whole time. Anybody else get that picture when we hear that story in the Bible? You know if he's in the wilderness, he has to go around and walk. And, you know, he he didn't, I don't picture Jesus as that guy that's like, okay, well, I'm going to set up camp here and I'm just going to fast for 40, 40 days, 40 nights. I see him as like, Lord, look at your beauty. He's a moving thinker. 
you know? He doesn't pace because he doesn't have to. He's, he's looking at God and he's talking. He's like, Lord, I'm lost in who you are, Father. I'm lost in where you're at. And I, I, think, he, I think he traveled towards the cliff, you know? I don't think he traveled away. I think he was traveling all over. He's like, man, look at all the, look at these hills. I can't believe you created this. And God's sitting there going, yeah, but you were there. He's like, yeah, I know, but Lord, come on, this was your idea. I think we misinterpret some of the word there and go, well, I got to sit and be still all the time to grow in Jesus. No, that's not even real. That's not real. I have friends that go, Ben, just shh. Be still with Jesus. I'm like, there's a season for that, and it's not right now. There's an urgency in the Lord right now. 2022 has come upon us. 2020, I had my break. (laughs) A couple months, I had a break. I was posting online. I was refreshed. 2021, prepping the way. God has us on the move today. We have to get up and go. Humility has to be something we hold on to. We have to be in the Lord at all times. The Lord desires us to be humble. We should desire it as well. So wrap yourself in his love and go where he calls you to go. Be a wanderer of the Lord. Deuteronomy 18, verse 17 through 20. This is going to be quick because we took too long at the beginning. And I want you guys to get out and eat so you can wander. I flipped that on you. You thought, oh, Ben doesn't want us to learn the word. No, I want you to do what the word tells you to do. Y'all hungry? And no one opened their mouth. What is this? All right, Deuteronomy 18, 17 through 20. I'm going to get really excited here. The Lord said to me, someone say, come on, Lord, talk to me. Are you serious? Say it like you mean it. Lord, I want you to talk to me today. Okay, this is what he said. He said, what they have said is right. I will raise up a prophet like you. Amen. Someone say, like me? Why can't it be like you? I'm going to raise up a prophet like you. From among the fellow, their fellow Israelites, I will put my words in his mouth, and he will tell the people everything I have commanded him. I will personally deal with anyone who will not listen to the message the prophet proclaims on my behalf. But the, any prophet who falsely claims to speak in my name or who speaks in the name of another God must die. I'll tell you this much. The wandering leads to the calling. It's right there. The wandering leads to the calling. How many of us have wandered long enough that we found the calling and we're living in it? How many of us continue to wander in the wilderness saying, Lord, I'm here, I'm ready. When you want to release me, I'm ready. I will stand on my feet. I will not sit down. I will not sleep. I will not. Spiritually, I am ready at all times. Lord, wake me up at 3 a.m. and send me because I am ready. We need to have an urgency in our bones that says at 2 o'clock in the morning, at midnight, I just fell asleep at 11, but at midnight, the Lord's waking me up to send me, to go, to reach the lost, to, to set the captives free, to be the prophet he's called me to be, whatever your calling is, to be the healer, to be the, the miracle worker, to be the prophet, to be the evangelist, to be the mom, to be the dad, to be the lawyer, to be the whatever you have been called to be, to be that in the moment that he's called you to be it. But we get so caught up in our own lives that we forget about his life. But he's called us to stop that. Knock it off. Get out of your mind because it's not your mind you need to adopt. It's mine. And we get so set. We get so stubborn. Tell, tell, I mean, ask, talk to my board. Ben's stubborn. But I, I guarantee you they'll say that I'm stubborn. But I also tell you, they'll say he always wants change. And he sticks to his guns to be stubborn on change. Y'all don't know. I've been working on things for five years you have no idea about. I'm like the thorn in someone's side. And I keep on going deeper. He's, knock it off. I already told you no. I don't, 
what's no mean? It's just one no closer to a yes. <laughs> but God calls us to wander because he has a calling for us. He calls us into calling, but we have to wander. We have to be in that spirit of wandering in him to get to where he's called us to be. Y'all hungry? Y'all want this wandering? Yeah. Y'all want to get out of here and go, man, I'm wandering into a restaurant. I don't know what God's going to do. Oh, hey, did I tell you? <laughs> I know you're, you're, you're serving me food, but I want to give you something to chew on for a second. Do you know that Jesus Christ loves you? He cares about you and he wants you to be his the rest of your life. Even if you have a day left, he wants it. He wants it. He wants it. When you find yourself getting close to God and learning humility and obeying him, you will find yourself getting called into the work for Christ. I think that's, that's a term. We go, well, are we about the work of Christ? No, 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 I'm not about the work of Christ. I'm about the work for Christ. Like, of, I can have a break. For, I'm constant. I want to be consistently constant for the kingdom of God. I want to be gospel advancing, kingdom building for the kingdom of Jesus. I want people to know that Christ's new covenant is a place you can live your purpose because it is a place to live your purpose. For Christ, not of Christ, for him. I'm tired of of Christians or if, because it's so easy to change it to an I instead of an O. If I do the work of Christ, I might if. The work if Christ. Y'all, if Christ does this and then you'll do that. Come on now, that doesn't work. It does sometimes, but it's not real. We can't live our life on the if. We got to live our life for Jesus is calling us into a new season. It's a season of learning humility and getting close to God so that we will hear and know our call. It's going to peel back the layers of the banana and he's going to see your insides and he's going to know you. He already does, but he wants you to do it with him. It's going to be hard. It's like when you go through a dry season, you have skin peeling off. You got sunburn. It hurts. But God's going to unwrap new living skin. Amen. You cannot put old wine into it or new wine into an old wine skin. Mm-hmm. And he's calling new wine in us all every single day. Change. change your skin. Change your wandering. Change the position of your heart to be more open to him. Be the people that we're called to be. Jesus has a calling and he's an outreach in each one of us how we're going to live for him. When you get close to the Lord, get close to the Lord, the Holy Spirit will direct your steps and lead you out in your call in who he is. It's about him. The wandering is not about us. It's not about the lost. It's about him. We find him in the wandering. Even when we already know him, we're finding him, we're working in him in the wandering. God's called me to a dry season. Lord, I accept it. Why? Because I know you're going to mold me. You're going to train me. You're going to teach me. You're going to grow me. You're going to humble me. You're going to allow me to obey every one of your commands. And then you're going to send me. But it's not about me because all of that goes back to him. Y'all, this isn't a game against God. This is a game with him. It's a game for him. You can't go to bat against God. You got to go to bat with him. When he takes his baseball bat and smacks you across the face, accept it, move on, and grow. Jesus is calling us to our cities. I talked to you earlier about a forgotten generation. You know, I've been blamed for that. I don't see much of my generation in church either. I think we've all messed up. What are we going to do to rectify the issue today? Turn it to Jesus and then fall in line with his army. Let's pray. 
Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you so much for the wandering seasons of our life, that we should always seek to be wanderers for Christ, Lord. I pray that you would just put that in our hearts this morning and that we would run out of here just saying, Lord, I'm wandering for you. I'm ready. I'm excited. I'm right where you want me, Lord. Even though I don't know necessarily where I'm going to be in a second, I know you know. And so, Lord, prepare me. Make my heart ready. Humble me because it's about you. Lord, if everybody could just know your name, if everybody could just start serving who you are, I see great things on the horizon. Lord, I pray that that would be our hearts, Lord, that people would know Jesus because it's for their benefit that they know you. It's for their freedom. It's for your call and your direction. And Lord, it's for your, your army, your military, as we go to war against the evil spirits of this world. Lord, we want to see your army raised up. We don't want it to be a thing of the past. We want it to be the tidal wave that's coming. Holy Spirit, I pray that that would be the reality as we see the tidal wave that we've just prepared for because we've entered a wandering season. Jesus, I ask that you would lead us, that you would direct us, and that you would mold us to be exactly what you've called us to be. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Hey.